when you then go to the comparison between the Constitution and the Lisbon Treaty, the major content is the same. There are 68 new areas of a qualified majority where you lose your veto. In the Lisbon Treaty, there are 68 <coughs> in the Constitution. It's the same. 105 new competences in the old, 105 competences in the new. The legal obligations in the two texts are the same, and therefore the arguments for referendums are the same as well. There's no difference. The Lisbon Treaty would be subjected to democratic scrutiny of the people in Ireland alone. There's clearly a fear of referendums in other states, and I find myself asking why. Why so when we talk so much about democracy? Who here fears the voice of the people? It's not a very sympathetic way the European, the European Council have ever worked. In this case, they took a political decision, they made a political agreement among Prime Ministers that this text should not be put for referendum anywhere. Then they tried to avoid it in Ireland. They realised it was not possible because your courts in this country are still too independent. Congratulations for that. It gives powerful EU institutions a free hand to further militarise our union. Would the people of Europe support such a treaty? I believe they would not, and perhaps that's why they're not being asked. Änderungsantrag 32, namentliche Abstimmung. Die Abstimmung ist eröffnet. Hat jeder abgestimmt. Die Abstimmung ist geschlossen. 129 dafür, 499 dagegen, abgelehnt. The most far-reaching treaty we are talking about. But in addition to the 68, There is a, what you would call ad libitum, because the Prime Ministers can decide on their own, without asking you again, to go from unanimity to qualified majority. Also in taxes, also in social security, also in the most sensitive areas, they do not need to ask you. Because this treaty is a self-amending treaty, we call it. And you should look in Article 48, piece 6, And there you will see that uh, the Prime Ministers can meet in a summit and then they can change the treaty on their own. There is no area which cannot be touched by the Lisbon Treaty. Then you should not only fear qualified majority votes in the Council, you should also fear, for instance, the court in Luxembourg. They can then use the extended areas of cooperation to make it their way. How can any of us here today who believe in democracy, peace or public services support the Lisbon Treaty? This treaty is not about reform or efficiency. It's a carte blanche for further erosion of democracy and its self-amending clauses uh, alone are evidence of this. What you are going to sign tomorrow is a treaty none of you have read simply because it's not possible to read it. Because it can't be read. This is not a treaty. This is 300 pages of amendments to 3,000 other pages of treaties. And you can only read it if you take one amendment by one and then look it up in the existing treaties and insert it. We'll do that job for you so that you will have a reader-friendly edition where it's possible. Mr. President, as you're aware, there will be a referendum in Ireland on June 12th on the Lisbon Treaty. I want to raise with you a matter of very deep concern in Ireland. It's emerged through the media that the Commission and committees of this Parliament are actively colluding to suppress information. Let me quote uh, Commission Vice President Margot Wallström. 
that the commission is willing to tone down or delay messages that might be unhelpful in advance of the referendum on the lisbon treaty. reports have been carried in the press of a letter that was sent to parliamentary committees urging them not to deal with sensitive political issues that might arise from lisbon until the treaty has been ratified. I want to say to you, Mr. President, that these types of tactics are unacceptable. The Irish people should have their debate with full information. They deserve the full and unvarnished facts. Whether it's in relation to corporation tax, whether it's in relation to the outworkings of the defence and security provisions of the treaty, at a minimum, I'm sure you'll agree, Mr. President, the people deserve the full facts. So I call on you today, Mr. President, to clarify publicly that committees will not delay or suppress debate on these sensitive matters and I would equally urge the Commission to do likewise. And then in legislation, what is then really the core for us coming from smaller member states? That's in those 68 new areas plus the areas where the Prime Minister has decided on their own. There, the system of double majority, qualified majority votes will appear. And this system is based on the following phases. First, the European Commission have a monopoly to propose a law. No one else. You have to be non-elected to be able to propose a law in the European Union. The core in the Lisbon Treaty is to move decisions away from the smaller member states to the bigger member states but also from the voters to the civil servants because 85% of all laws in Brussels, 85%, they are decided by civil servants in 300 secret working groups in the council, prepared by 3,000 other secret working groups in the commission. As a member of parliament, I have no access to the documents, I have no access to what they are doing. And in this chamber we speak the, the language of peace. And yet Lisbon commits us to further increases in union military spending and to the continuing support for the armaments industry in Europe. And why do we insist on emulating the United States? Do we really believe that creating its European equivalent will promote a peaceful world? I don't. You move decisions from the small to the big and you move decisions in all member states from elected members of parliament to civil servants. We continue with the myth that the EU values public services and workers' rights when all of the evidence on the ground contradicts this. Ask the people of Vaxholm or the workers at Irish ferries about the EU commitment to the vindication of workers' rights. What democracy is how you can amend the laws. And the core democracy, that's that you can go for elections, that you can have a new majority and then a new law. This core doesn't exist in the Lisbon Treaty. You can go for elections, but you cannot change the laws. The non-elected decide whether our democracy is good. And I would say to you, if this is a good system, why not, why not insert it in Ireland? Here in the door, 100 metres from here. Why not say to the Irish Parliament, the Irish door, from now on, you shall not make laws. From now on, you propose amendments to the civil servants in the departments, in the ministries, and then the heads of departments meet in a secret room. If they say it's a bad decision the parliament have done, then the parliament is outlawed. This is how Europe works today. As an Irish woman, as a proud European, I want my country to have the freedom to take decisions in the best interests of our people. I want all member states, large and small, to equally enjoy that right. And the Lisbon Treaty, ladies and gentlemen, is a bad deal for Ireland, it's a bad deal for Europe, and it's a bad deal for the wider world.